Don't fall for counterfeit software this autumn. Visit SoftwareKeep. SoftwareKeep is the digital destination for authentic software solutions and amazing deals. Hey, 42 here. On the 22nd of December, 1938, South African fisherman Hendrik Hewson was sorting through his catch when he came across a fish he'd never seen before. Huh? It was about a meter and a half long and covered in thick armored scales that shimmered in an iridescent blue. As an experienced captain, Yerson rarely saw fish he didn't recognize, so he called the local museum to see if anyone knew what it was. They didn't. In fact, the fish looked like no species anyone had ever seen. Actually, that isn't quite true. There was one kind of fish this strange specimen resembled, a species called the coelacanth. But there was a slight problem with that. Coelacanths had been extinct for more than 60 million years. Or had they? Fast forward more than 80 years to today, and that weird blue fish is widely considered to have been one of the greatest zoological discoveries in history. After all, it isn't every day that a creature known only from ancient fossils randomly turns up in a fishing net. But the coelacanth story is about more than its seriously spectacular return from extinction. This is a creature unlike anything else on Earth. Amongst its many accolades, it's the oldest surviving species of fish on the planet, having first appeared more than 400 million years ago. It has the longest gestation period of any animal at five years, and remarkably enough, it is more closely related to you than it is to any other fish alive today. Just in case that wasn't enough for you, this not-so-humble fish has even found itself at the center of one of the biggest debates in human history. Evolution versus creation. With both creationists and evolutionists believing the coelacanth proves that they're right about the origins of life on Earth. Intrigued? You absolutely should be, because this is a story of the coelacanth, the fish that came back from the dead. SoftwareKeep is the digital destination for authentic software solutions and amazing deals. Their aim is to arm their clients with the digital tools they need for success. Standing as a beacon of trust, offering genuine software at prices that challenge the norm. As an influencer with a home office, it's essential that I have the latest software and I know it comes from a legitimate source. And it's nice to know I can trust SoftwareKeep. As the leaves change and the season turns, Software Keep invites everyone to elevate their digital experience with genuine top tier software solutions. Their awesome sale offers deals so enticing they perfectly match the season's charm. Seize the season and snag these awesome deals before they're gone. And a quick heads up, you can use my promo code 4020 to get great offers on software right now. Whether you're searching for Microsoft Office 2021 or Windows 11, Software Keep has you covered. SoftwareKeep is a Microsoft Gold certified partner and they have affordability like no other. Click my link in the description box now and use the promo code 4020 to get great offers on software right now. Thanks to SoftwareKeep for sponsoring this video. Louis Agassiz was one of the most important naturalists of the 19th century. A professor of zoology at Harvard, amongst his many impressive achievements, he founded the scientific discipline of glaciology and created the world-renowned Museum of Comparative Zoology. But probably his most famous work came in the field of ichthyology. That's the study of fish for those of you who don't speak fluent Greek. Agassiz classified hundreds of fish species during his long and illustrious career, including everyone's favorite horror from the deep, the megalodon. But in 1839, he described another new species, a slightly less impressive specimen identified from an 80 million year old fossilized tail. He named it the coelacanth, though nobody at the time really gave a toss. This was the era when the first dinosaur species were being discovered, and with house-sized reptiles hoovering up the headlines, the classification of a random prehistoric fish didn't make much of a splash, at least not to begin with. That all changed 20 years later, when some English bloke called Charlie published a book called On the Origin of Species. Charlie, surnamed Darwin, had come up with a fancy new idea he dubbed the theory of evolution, and it sent shockwaves through the scientific world and beyond. Before Darwin, Western scientists had been convinced that this origin of species business could be described in three short words. God did it. After Darwin, well, there was one hell of an argument. Most great scientific breakthroughs force us to rethink the way the world works. Darwin, on the other hand, was asking the human race to rethink how their religion worked. 
Unsurprisingly, plenty of people didn't really fancy that, and some made it their mission to pick holes in Darwin's newfangled ideas. One of the biggest arguments against the theory of evolution was the lack of so-called transitional fossils. In other words, if species slowly evolved into other species over time, where were the fossils of the frigging weird hybrid things that must have existed in between? And here's where the coelacam fits neatly in. In the two decades since Agassiz had first described a species, several more complete coelacam fossils had been found, and they exhibited some unusual characteristics. Most unusual of all were its fins, which could be found on the end of sturdy, leg-like appendages called lobes. These lobes contained bones that correspond to those found in the upper arms and legs of land vertebrates, and they were connected to distinctly unfishy shoulder joints, similar to those found in modern reptiles. And scientists didn't know it at the time, but coelacamps also had a small vestigial lung that had no business at all being inside a water-breathing fish. In other words, the coelacamp appeared to be a Darwinist's holy grail, a genuine transitional fossil. And this wasn't just any old transition, it was one of the biggest and hardest to explain in the entire history of life on Earth. The evolution of land vertebrates from fish. Almost overnight, the coelacanth became the poster boy, well, poster fish, for supporters of Darwin's theory of evolution, who believed it was the fabled missing link between fish and tetrapods, the first fish to flop out of the ocean and have a crack at life on land. Over the following decades, more coelacanth fossils were found. The most recent were around 66 million years old, and the oldest were a staggering 410 million years old. To put that number into context, the coelacanth evolved before trees. By the early 20th century, Darwin's theory of evolution had cemented itself as a foundational pillar of mainstream science. It no longer had much need for a poster fish, and so the coelacanth once again faded into obscurity, only getting reference now and then at the annual ichthyologist pub quiz. But all that changed once again in 1938, when out of nowhere, the coelacanth flopped its way onto the front page of newspapers all over the world. Marjorie Courtenay Latimer was the curator of a museum in the South African city of East London. Yes, that is in South Africa, and I too was surprised by its name. Anyway, part of her remit was to investigate any unusual wildlife found in the local area. So, when she got a call from one Captain Hendrik Jursens, asking her to have a look at the unusual blue fish he'd caught in his trawling net, she headed out at once. By the time she arrived at the scene, the fish was already dead, but as soon as she laid eyes on it, wow. she had a feeling it was something special. Using powers of persuasion worthy of a Jedi, Marjorie convinced a local cab driver to bung the man-sized slime-covered fish into the boot of his car and take it to the East London Museum. The initial reaction from the staff there was actually a bit of a disappointment. There was general agreement that the fish looked a bit dodgy, but the museum's chairman thought it was probably a common rock cod that had fallen out of the ugly tree. Marjorie wasn't convinced. She trawled through the museum's fish books and couldn't find a match with any of the hundreds of species known to live in the waters off the coast of South Africa, or anywhere else for that matter. She needed a second opinion, preferably an expert one, so she made a rough sketch of the fish and posted it to an ichthyologist friend called JLB Smith, along with a brief written description of what she'd found. While she waited for a reply, Marjorie had some more pressing concerns Ooh. to worry about. Namely, what am I going to do with this massive fish? It was smack in the middle of the South African summer, and things were starting to get a little fruity. The museum didn't have any preservation facilities, so Marjorie tried her luck at the local morgue instead. Perhaps unsurprisingly, considering she'd bought them a 60 kilogram fish instead of the more customary dead human, they told her to get stuffed, and that gave her an idea. Perhaps the local taxidermist could help. It wasn't ideal. Taxidermy is a far cry from scientific preservation, especially since the first step involves lobbing all the internal organs right in the bin. But with no other options, it was the best she could do. By the time JLB Smith's reply arrived, the unidentified fish was stuffed and mounted for display. And the contents of Smith's letter were far more positive than Marjorie could have possibly imagined. He was confident the find was of huge scientific importance, because as far as he could tell, Marjorie had bagged herself a coelacanth. 
When people tell this story, they often overlook just how insane that call actually was. I mean, just think about it for a second. Based on a simple description and the crappy drawing, Smith correctly concluded that a fish he'd never set eyes on was a member of a species known only from fossils that was supposed to have gone extinct more than 60 million years ago. Seriously, give that man an albatross. It would be more than a month before he eventually made it out to East London, probably because he went to the wrong one. But once there, he confirmed his initial suspicions. He named this previously known species of coelacanth Latimeria columnae, in honour of Marjorie, and prepared to take the find public. Scientists are a fairly stoic bunch, but when the news of the coelacanth's discovery, or should that be rediscovery, got out, ichthyologists all over the world lost their collective shit. It was like finding a velociraptor wandering around the car park at your local Tesco. This was a creature that should not, could not exist, and yet the evidence was irrefutable. Somehow, coelacanths had survived the last 60 million years, and just nobody had noticed. Species that are thought to have gone extinct, only to suddenly reappear again, are called Lazarus taxa, and they are incredibly rare. Only about 350 have ever been identified, and the overwhelming majority of those are species that were believed to have died out relatively recently, in the last 100 years or so. There are only a handful of examples of species that were found alive after first having been identified in the fossil record. That made the newly found coelacanth a big deal, but unfortunately the only specimen known to man was in pretty bad shape, after having been stuffed like your nan's dog. Having evaded human attention for hundreds of thousands of years, the coelacanth suddenly became the most sought-after fish on the planet. Scientists wanted more specimens to study, and aquariums wanted the world's hottest fish to bring in the punters, so a large reward was offered to anyone who could catch one alive. Thousands of people tried, and for a while there were fears of over-enthusiastic fishermen putting the species at risk. But despite this mad rush, it was 12 long years before any coelacanth was captured. No bloody wonder they've been hiding from humans and other species for 60 billion years. I would have as well. But despite this mad rush, it was 12 long years before another coelacanth was captured. This time in the waters of the Camaro Islands. The find was of such scientific importance that the South African government immediately scrambled a military aircraft to fetch it. And you can't really blame them. This was an opportunity that was perhaps unique in all of human history. We usually have to guess what long dead creatures were like by studying their bones. It's a difficult process, and even with a full skeleton, certain attributes are practically unknowable. For example, we still aren't really sure whether dinosaurs were warm or cold-blooded. The second coelacanth specimen, fresh and unmolested by the rigours of taxidermy, was a chance to put flesh on ancient bones. It was like waving a magic wand and bringing a 60 million year old fossil back to life. Thanks to that second specimen, and around 100 more coelacanths that have been caught in the years since, we've learned so much more about these incredible creatures that we ever could have inferred from bones alone. For example, we now know that coelacanths move their leg-like lobes in an alternating pattern, a bit like a horse trotting, giving them amazing control in the water. They've even been seen in the wild swimming on their heads, and even upside down. They grow slowly, reach sexual maturity later in life, and can live to be over 100 years old. They also have the longest gestation period, not just of any fish, but of any animal known to science, with coelacanth embryos gestating for at least five years before they hatch. Okay, now for the big questions. How is it possible that this species was unknown for so long, and why did the coelacanth drop out of the fossil record for more than 60 million years? Let's start with the first one. We didn't know coelacanths were still alive and flipping, largely because of where and how they live. For starters, they're deep sea fish, spending most of their time around 200 meters below the surface. That's obviously true of a lot of other fish too, but coelacanths are also nocturnal, hunting only at night. Crucially, they spend their days sleeping in deep sea volcanic caves, far out of reach of fishing nets. As for why they dropped out of the fossil record, that bit's actually surprisingly simple. I mentioned earlier that the most recent coelacanth fossils are about 66 million years old, and that number may have rung a few bells. Because it was about 66 million years ago that a big fuck-off asteroid smashed into Earth, wiping out all the non-avian dinosaurs and tens of thousands of other species besides. Until we realised that rumours of their extinction had been greatly exaggerated, we thought the asteroid had killed the coelacanth too. 
Obviously, we now know that wasn't the case, but it's likely the global catastrophe dramatically reduced Celiacanth numbers. Most Celiacanths we know from the fossil record lived in shallow waters, and some were even freshwater species that lived in lakes and rivers. Those ecosystems all have something in common. Unlike the deep oceans where Celiacanths are found today, they're very conducive to fossil formation. Put those two things together, the dramatic decrease in population size and the move to a habitat where fossils rarely form, and it isn't hard to see how the Celiacanth pulled off its great vanishing act. It's now more than 80 years since the Celiacanth came back from the dead, but it remains an extremely important species, even today. In 2013, its entire genome was sequenced for the first time, and we discovered that, hard as it is to believe, these incredible creatures are more closely related to us than they are to modern fish. Scientists also discovered that the Celiacanth isn't quite the missing link between fish and land animals that we once thought it was. That honour belongs to an unknown ancestor of the lungfish, the only other surviving lobe-finned fish. Whilst that, sadly, means you and I don't have Celiacanth great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandparents, in some ways that makes this weird fish even stranger. An evolutionary oddity that almost made it onto land, then disappeared into the depths of the ocean instead. You'll often hear the Celiacanth being referred to as a living fossil, because it remained largely unchanged for 400 million years. For that reason, some creationists now consider the species to be a shining example of why evolution doesn't exist. After all, if it did, how could a species survive for hundreds of millions of years without evolving? It's an interesting question, but ultimately, a flawed one. Because it's built on a false premise. Like every other animal on the planet, they are evolving. Their outward appearance may not have changed that much, but their genome has. Celiacamps are a textbook example of what's known as stabilizing evolution. Their natural habitat deep down in the Indian Ocean has remained pretty much the same for millions of years, so there's been relatively little change in the kind of selection pressure that might stimulate the spread of new phenotype variations. It's the evolutionary equivalent of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In 1997, a couple on their honeymoon were wandering through a quaint fish market when they spotted something interesting. A large fish with distinctive lobe-shaped limbs. The newlyweds happened to be scientists. He was a biologist, and she was a naturalist. And they recognised the animal at once. It was a freshly caught coelacanth. That in itself wasn't all that remarkable. This was 60 years since the coelacanth's rediscovery, after all. What was remarkable, however, was the location of the fish market in the city of Mando on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. That's a good 6,000 miles away from the only known coelacanth population. After sending the fish away for DNA testing, scientists discovered that not one, but two coelacanth species had been hiding from us all along. Today, the West Indian Ocean variety discovered by Marjorie Cortina Latimer in 1938 is considered to be critically endangered, with only about 500 surviving individuals. And there are around 10,000 of the more recently discovered Indian coelacanths. It's thought that human activity may soon push these ancient species to extinction. The rediscovery of the coelacanth may be the greatest zoological find in modern history for us, but it may prove to be the greatest disaster of the last 400 million years for those incredible fish. Let's just hope they can pull off just one more miracle and survive us. Thanks for watching. Just a quick word to say that I couldn't make these videos without the support of my Patreon members. Consider joining the exclusive 42 Discord community by supporting me on Patreon. It's a great place to discuss my videos with like-minded individuals and myself. The link's in the description, but if you don't want to, or you can't join my Patreon, then please don't worry. A simple like or comment to say thanks would also put a huge smile on my face. Thank you.